good afternoon everyone sorry for the slight delay in uh, starting the webinar i was literally stopped by zoom to update something um thank you all i can see some attendees here and uh, we have some great questions uh, that have been submitted prior to the webinar So I'm just uh, waiting for maybe 10 more seconds. We have already delayed starting the webinar and uh, we get started. Few moments. I've got some of the questions on a screen next to me. Meanwhile, you can also carry on asking questions at the link below or the QR code bit.ly AMA underscore mindly. No data is collected. I don't know who is asking the question. Of course, I get some spam, but it's worth it because we get some answers. Okay, let's get started for today. Welcome to Mindly Wellbeing webinar, 10th of January, 23. You'll get this recording on our YouTube channel as well. We change lives by empowering you to change emotions. Um, my name is Jeev Sahu, Sahu like Yahoo. I speak about uh, mental well-being. Originally, uh, I come from a technology industry, then finance, and uh, I've worked in entrepreneurship and investment as well. But like everyone, life happens. And uh, when I was going through um, let's say so-called things in life, uh, I did not get a lot of help. And um, like everyone, I started finding help on YouTube and reading help, self-help books and so forth. So I thought, why not make this into small frameworks that I can share? And uh, this is how Mindly started. Now, I combine a number of uh, frameworks from uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, entrepreneurial risk models, uh, and uh, general common sense. But the two key things I look for are one um, is it simple is it simple enough to try and secondly does it work there are there are so many pieces of information available today it's overwhelming in fact uh, we refer to that uh, there is a anxiety um, uh, anxiety uh, distraction cycle we feel anxious about something it did not be something very uh, big we go try to find the solution and then uh, we uh, we distract ourselves. Many a times it doesn't even solve the situation. And But later we come back to a, a, a bit different level of anxiety. Uh, if you have found the solution, amazing. But if you haven't, then it comes back even harder. And uh, I think that having some quick solutions that actually work is extremely useful. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, it does something to the algorithm so that the uh, videos and audios go to the relevant people and you also get some relevant uh, uh, content in future. Let's get started. So looking at uh, one of the first questions uh, I have, I want to share something called the emotions wheel. Whenever I do this, uh, this kind of workshops and I ask people to list down emotions, uh, the most common answer I get is uh, uh, like people feel happy, sad, angry, and so forth. About five, seven emotions uh, come to mind. Those are the most frequent emotions, right? Um, and if we ask them to dig deeper, okay, people can go up to 20 and so forth. Uh, we have an emotions matrix with nearly 400 emotions. And these days uh, there are apps available which, which shows even 10,000 emotions. Um, let's not go too much into the 10,000 side of things, but let's see the concept I'm trying to uh, answer here. The question uh, effectively is how do we reframe our emotions? And last webinar, we talked about how do we reframe a past situation? This one is building on top of it. Every past situation has an emotion associated with it. Let's say we go with the uh, emotion of, let me uh, start here um angry okay now in this small wheel by the way this is a free download that is available both on our website and as well as a, a go, uh, if you do a google search you can easily find it uh, and uh, thankfully um, the person who has put it up has made it free um so we we see angry fearful bad surprised happy and, and disgusted sad 
um, let's go with angry. Okay, these are the few emotions, and uh, uh, and uh, we have. I'm working in an office, and I feel angry at times. Uh, how do I reframe this situation? Why am I feeling angry? I don't know, and uh, uh, nobody is helping, and so forth. The the bottom line is I'm not feeling great about it, right? And that has a direct relationship with our mental well-being, right? Now, what I do is I ask people to pause and say. Are you feeling angry or is it something more? And let's go to the next wheel here. You see, I mean, each of these emotions can be split into further emotions. And if we stick to the emotion of anger, are you feeling let down? Are you feeling critical about something? Are you feeling distant? You know, in relationships, there is something that anger can be expressed in so many different ways. Are you feeling mad at someone? or some situation or yourself did someone humiliate you or humiliate someone else humiliate um what exactly is going on and when i ask them this second question it it makes people take a step back and uh, look at things in a new perspective and uh, they say okay yeah uh, you know what this is not really anger but uh, yeah I, I felt insulted by the way people talked to me in office uh, one hour ago and so forth let's say in that particular situation and and okay i'm using the example of anger a negative uh, or so called uh, uh, protective emotions but um, you could use that for being happy were you feeling happy or was it a feeling of acceptance that made it uh, work better and uh, was it a was it a feeling of peace that was helping you and these are the things that start put giving you a perspective around it okay now let's see what happens even if we go a bit deeper did you feel angry or was it betrayal was it resentment did somebody disrespect you did you feel violated and so forth you see the perspective will change it's not just anger okay uh, like I mentioned, anger is a protective emotion. Anger is a secondary emotion that comes in. It is, no, it is not a primary emotion. It, it comes because of something else, uh, some an another primary emotion as well. Um, we can, you can go through some of our other videos to go through the uh, secondary emotions. On the, on the happier side, um, were you really feeling happy or you were feeling joyful and content? Was it you feeling respected? Was it feeling loving and so forth? So these are the things you have to look at. And remember, when you start doing this, your reframing becomes better and better. Now, there are two reasons why I directly don't repeat the question that has been submitted. And, and there are a number of questions that come and I bunch them together. But the, the way I reply it, I am sure that the whoever has asked this question is getting their answer. This is mainly uh, so that I can keep anonymity. Uh, I really don't want to uh, share it in a way uh, that gives away who asked the question uh, because we feel safe to ans uh, ask questions uh, if, um, if we are anonymous. So please keep uh, the answers coming. So in the past webinar, you looked at how to reframe situations. If you were not in there, please go back and have a quick uh, listen. Whenever we reframe situations, we have to reframe emotions. In the emotions, uh, we have to st take a step back and see, is it really the basic emotion that uh, we are looking at? Or can I reframe, uh, can I put a different word into it? What exactly is happening? Once you start doing that, you will see that uh, you get a different perspective to that particular situation. Once you have that different perspective, what do you do? Okay. Now, the entire self-help industry is all about, it's, it's your fault, it's my fault, it, hence we have to fix it. Or we have to do something to fix it. I understand that part of it. I get it. Uh, and we are not going into the self-help side of things. We are here to talk about mental well-being using some scientific uh, frameworks, right? Now, let's say in the last emotion, I am uh, feeling disrespected, okay? What can I do to come back to us to an emotion that I want to feel? And just for sake of reference, I want to go back. 
let's say from feeling disrespect I, I want to feel respected and confident let's let's come into that okay what can happen now in this situation the first thing that comes in general especially when we are feeling anxious is that we personalize it that's a bias that comes that's lit literally like a if, if like a glass if you wear um, yellow goggles you see the world yellow because we are not in the best of uh, our state of mind we feel that okay this must be our fault and that's called personalization bias it first of all it may be your fault it may not be your fault i don't know but jumping into conclusions is is not something that we do okay secondly instead of taking blame for that situation instead of counting this that i'm being blamed i would like to switch that to two things one how can we take responsibility for this situation and this slowly brings us to the driver's seat of that particular situation how do i take responsibility and slowly how do i bring a sense of control if you have been following some of our frameworks there are three things that really can change any kind of situations to a uh, to a nice situation where you feel better feel calm the green zone and that is a sense of purpose a sense of control and a sense of service or value okay now we are not talking about life's purpose or controlling people or anything of that kind we're talking about micro purposes even if i make a salad if i follow some steps i'm eating it for my health and i feel really good after eating a salad such a small task sense of micro purpose sense of control uh in the uh, in following the steps and sense of feeling good after that of course if you find life's purposes using that congratulations but in this particular situation when i'm going from feeling disrespected um first of all instead of being uh, blaming someone else i say okay how do i take responsibility for this situation and what can i do about this situation that is the real meaning of sense of control okay so what can i do if i felt disrespected i might switch the person from the behavior whoever disrespected me uh i might try to see from their perspective or i might just move to another situation where i actually feel respected uh maybe the person was having a bad day uh you know in cbt this is the main thing we change our perspective okay in a good way not at the cost of a compromise in a good way uh, we have some examples um or maybe it was uh, uh something that i deserved it but not really to the extent that i should have been disrespected so what could i do maybe i i, I take it as a learning or a lesson or do something else about it okay you can make a, a lot of uh, reasons now this is not about the grapes are sour situation and this is not about creating an excuse if you have really reframed it correctly you should feel good about it and you have learned something out of it okay um for example people reframe situations by saying yeah that guy if disrespects everybody so it's okay if he disrespected me that's not helpful that doesn't make you feel better okay in the long run you don't feel better so that's not really reframing so let's say in this situation i choose the example that okay i learned something out of it what can i do next time what can i do next time gives me a sense of control and hence next time i am in a similar situation i will approach it differently and slowly switch towards feeling engaged feeling curious and hence feeling respected you might think it it's difficult but it's literally a switch of our um, situation okay so this is very very uh, important so you convert blame to responsibility to a sense of control okay okay i wish i had got this um images before the simple model is something that we use um, a lot in fact uh, there was a variation of a question where uh, like why why do we know all the answers but we keep keep slipping um without going too deep into the simple model i'm going to tell you something we slip every one of us slips we are human we know solutions 
and most of the times a slip is effectively a decision a, a decision especially in our feeling in, in our mind we don't feel good we know the answer but we still do something else and in, that directly relates to our emotional well-being which is why in the simple model that you can see in the screen i put e emotion well-being at in the center so we might have great friends social well-being individual well-being monetary well-being physical well-being love life well-being but if our emotions are not helping us out we are not um uh, in in a situation where we can guarantee that we will not slip even when we know emotional regulation what we learn is not not a foolproof way that you will never slip it's like surfing what we learn is if you slip how do you recover yourself back before you hurt yourself that's the trick if you find someone who has all the answers in life never slips i would be worried i mean i don't know if such a person exists uh, who who has no problem in life everything is uh, resolved now we do we even even after having all sorts of emotional well-being trainings and uh, understanding all the answers we will all slip the trick is how can how well can we recover ourselves before being hurt and that is where you reframe you you look at a variety of emotional vocabulary you use some of the frameworks that are shared uh, in our youtube channel and in our courses uh, and uh, slowly move to the right side of emotions uh, where you start being curious engaged creative and so forth and uh, that will take you towards first towards constructive emotions and then towards connective emotions and doing this consistently will make you uh, feel better so uh, i hope i have tried to answer uh, some of the questions i'm just going through my list uh, without revealing uh, the exact questions i wanted to answer this and for one of us i'm going to see yes that's that's something i have to answer the next time because i have a real case study about that one so i'm going to bring that next tuesday uh, please keep uh, listening in watching these uh, videos um, i keep making the smaller ones more often so that you get uh, quick answers that work okay let's not make life complicated secondly don't think that you are alone and you should be shy uh, this is this is like any other taboo topic we got to talk guys and uh, girls we all have to talk uh, the more we talk the better it is uh, and uh, we all are in this together um, we all uh, try to find solutions on youtube and other such places just because we don't want to talk about it well not talking is from two perspectives one is uh, we feel shy or uh, being judged secondly we also don't want to disrespect like what if the other person feels uh, judged or uh, i don't know what to talk if i hurt someone by using the wrong terminology but we all have to talk the more we talk it becomes a diminishing problem uh, think about it the more we share it becomes a diminishing problem uh, one person had shared with me um when i'm not feeling well in my mind it's like i want to really shout out to the world but no one's listening and uh, seriously we we need not be uh, in that situation we let's talk let's shout out use the um use the link below to send your questions uh, and uh, uh, go through the videos if that helps you i'll try my level best uh, i'm well uh, supported by a team who can give you even better answers than me but like i mentioned all these answers are proven quick as well as they uh, give results uh, by changing your emotions you can change your life um, you can watch the previous recordings in our youtube channel and uh, keep feeling better your first priority is you yourself please keep taking care